Greetings, it's Jerry here. So I'm just about to do some soldering, uh, especially soldering this 32 pin um, connector onto a PCB that I've created. And um, this is the second PCB that I'm attempting this with. Yeah, so this is my first design. Um, this is actually the first PCB I've ever designed. So the idea was to break it out into pins that I could put on the breadboard or vero strip. You know, I tried to do use the drag soldering technique first up. Is where you essentially put solder onto the tip of your soldering iron and you drag it along here. And you can see by this one, I did actually manage to get it to solder, but the the anchoring points I couldn't get to solder properly with that and eventually the thing pulled off um, and that's you know because the anchors it's a surface mount device so that's the anchor here at this end um, and you it's really difficult to get any solder underneath that um, and solder it with a soldering iron so what I ended up doing was I used solder paste um, and mixed it with flux and I was able to paste the solder paste onto there and then solder it on with a soldering iron and this has been rock solid uh, since I did that and it was extremely easy so I'm going to do the same trick again with this new PCB that I've created so this is for a project that I'm doing and the ribbon cable goes down here and in this case I've actually gone ahead and designed a circuit board that takes modules that are basically designed to use with Arduinos and these modules can actually be soldered directly onto this board and this board in turn is actually a shield for an Arduino Mega and so when I solder the pins on it will connect like that Anyway, what it is isn't that important. It's just the technique that I'm going to be using that I thought I would share again with you because I've been so happy uh, with the result of this. Okay, so this technique involves taking some solder paste, um, which is too thick to apply directly to the board. It won't stick to the board properly. And we're just going to mix it with a little bit of flux. Okay, it's a bit gooey. Um, this is just some cheap flux that I bought off AliExpress. And I'm just going to mix it into a nice little paste that I can easily apply to the board. Okay, so we're just going to apply solder paste. It can be quite liberal, but um, what I don't want to do is, is when I'm doing these pins is I want to leave the ends of the pins uncovered so that I'm able to to place the connector on the board and see where the pins line up otherwise I'm going to be flying blind And I want to make sure that there's plenty on these mounting pads. And I'm being a bit sloppy because the um, the solder paste will run. Just got to make sure that there's enough. I don't know if you can have too much because we can clean it off. Well, we will be cleaning it off. Any remaining stuff with the isopropyl alcohol. Um, but especially because we've a, we've mixed it with flux, it's going to really want to stick to the metal parts. And of course, we can always go and touch all the 
the pins that don't work up with normal solder. So really this is the best of both worlds I think. Okay, so now it's time for the trickiest part actually is just getting this to line up. Oh, I was going to say you want to drop it down as neatly as possible to the <laughs> to the pins. Um, anyway, um, because we want to be able to line up the pins. Okay, so I think I've got it in place at the moment. So now I just need to go along and I'm just going to touch each individual pin and the solder should flow very nicely. Lovely. And I'm just going to pause there because um, to let the board cool down, let the connector cool down a little bit because I could be applying too much heat because I'd like to have my soldering iron turned up, which is a habit I really should get out of. And I'm actually not watching the screen. I'm watching the board, even though it's difficult for me to see the board with my eyes it's so small um, but I can see the solder melting into place and it, it changes the way the lights reflected on it so that's what I'm actually looking at yeah so I'll just let the board cool down a little bit and I'll give it another go over and then we'll check the pins and then we will finally solder on the connector. Yeah, I really don't think I could have done this without this um, hooked tip. I really like it. Not expensive. Let me just check that. Now we're just going to do a bit of a push test. Okay, so they're all connected on quite nicely. Um, yeah, it's a bit hard to see, but you know, I've checked the filleting. So I've checked to see that the solder has actually made good connection underneath. Okay, so that looks good to me. And all we need to do now is to solder on the mechanical connection here. which like I said is really good. This is what the solder paste really helps you with because it can, the solder is sitting underneath the pad. And now that I've done that, I've got a really solid connection. Yeah, that's really, really solid. Obviously I will be testing the connection. Once I put the ribbon cable in, I'll, I'll, I'll test the whole lot. Um, so the only other thing we need to do is to clean it up uh, with some isopropyl alcohol. So that's the final result there, nice and secure. Okay, so the next step to get my glorious PCB working is I want to 
solder on the pins underneath that will connect it onto the Arduino Mega um, to make sure that that's okay. I have checked it before, so I'm pretty sure that it is, but <laughs> I've been wrong before. Okay, well that's the soldering done, so I've just soldered all the pins onto the bottom. And now for the moment of truth. Will it actually fit as a shield onto my Mega? I'm a little bit concerned. Look at that. So now I just need to put in um, some female headers here so I can plug in my little Arduino components and populate a few more pins at the top to break out. Excellent. Okay, so we finished. So we've got a shield for the Arduino Mega um, with all of these female headers to allow me to plug in um, the different Arduino modules. So I've got four of these 16 channel multiplexers on here. Basically that allows you to take one pin over here and switch it to any of these 16 pins over here. And I've got four of them. And um, the other thing I've got is a level shifter for talking with other devices. This board here is 5 volts and if I want to talk to a 3.3 volt device I can plug this in here except that's the wrong size I've got the wrong model that's okay that's just something I pulled out of my parts bin so I need to buy the right module to, to fit into there so that's you know I think that's a pretty good solution it's using pre-made modules makes a lot of sense to me certainly saved me a lot of time when creating the PCB. If I had have had to actually um, create the circuits for all of this, it would have been far more complex. And of course, I can just pull them out if they're faulty and uh, plug another one in. More expensive, I guess, but um, you know, this is just a one-off device for myself. It's not like I'm gonna manufacture it, in which case maybe that wouldn't be such a good idea. But there you go, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now, whether it works or not, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to check that out. Um, but that's, there's a lot of code that needs to be written um, for this device to work, and it's not something I'm gonna do now. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the video there. If you like what I'm doing, please think about subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, something like that. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Ciao.